Hi guys, welcome back to the tutorial. Uh, just this, this is just a quick um, video. I just wanted to address something that somebody had posted on the one of the last videos, and that is I forgot the most important thing when I was going over um, how to do the cutscenes. I forgot one of the most important things on a, about a cutscene, and that's how to skip one or how to allow the, the player to skip one. So I'm going to show that here, um, how to allow the player to skip cutscenes. Um, it's really easy to do. I'm going to go into my room script of the cutscene room that I created. Um, this is my after fade in function where I typed all all of the stuff that was in the last video. Basically what you want to do is you want to find the beginning of the cutscene or the beginning of the part that you want the player to skip. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to define the area that uh, the, the lines of code here that define your cutscene, the beginning and the end of your cutscene. Um, in this case, the beginning of my cutscene starts with this play music um, function here. So I'm going to I'm going to put something before that line, and that's called start cutscene. Open parentheses. Now it wants one of five different options, and this is basically how how can the player skip your cutscene? Um, either they can skip it by pressing any key. They can skip it by pressing any key or mouse click, escape only, escape only, or pressing the right mouse button, or any mouse click. Um, so I'll just have it so that they ha they can they can escape it by by um, how about any key or mouse click will will escape this mouse this um, cutscene. So you you select that, close the parentheses, close the the semicolon. Now, what will happen is. This doesn't actually do anything but tell it tell AGS that hey, at this point the player can skip the cutscene if they cl uh, press any key or the mouse click. Now where does it skip to? When if the player click clicks a mouse key, a mouse button or presses a key, where does it where does it jump to? And basically what you'll want to do is you want to find the end of your cutscene, which is here let's say, and you want to just at the end of your cutscene you want to say end cutscene. An end cutscene doesn't take any parameters at all. So basically what's going to happen is if no matter where I am within this cutscene, think of this as the think of this as the beginning of the cutscene and the end is the is the end of the cutscene. So now no matter where I, where the code is, where the game is in the middle here, if I skip the cutscene, it will automatically jump me to this end cutscene uh, line here and it will do whatever's after this. Not only does it jump you to the cut to the end cutscene line, but it actually fast forwards um, you there. So anything, any code that actually happens get, gets performed. So characters move around on the screen and everything like that, um, and then and then it jumps you to the cu end cutscene. So you don't have to worry about moving characters around or anything like that if they happen to skip the cutscene. Yes. Now in this case, the only thing after this is quit game. But normally you wouldn't have you wouldn't just play a cutscene and then quit the game. Um, in fact, I'll comment that out just to um, show you what happens here. So if I run that. And the the game starts, the uh, the cutscene starts, and um, now you'll notice that it's playing. You probably can't hear it. Let me turn it up. Um, so you can hear the music and everything like that. Now watch what happens if I click. Okay. So what happened is it just skipped the cutscene. Now, um, and the reason the music is still playing. Let me turn that down a little bit. The reason the music is still playing is no is because nowhere in the code did we ever tell the music to stop playing. So that's the reason that the music is still playing here. Um, but but you know I, st I have control again. You notice you notice that Sammy just kind of jumped here, um, and so that's all I w really wanted to say. There's actually two other things that I wanted to address in this video real quick. Um, Normally in a cutscene you won't have. Let me play that again here. Normally in a cutscene you won't have the mouse cursor. See how you can see the mouse cursor being displayed here? I mean, that's that's just a preference thing in your game. You have to decide whether you want to hide the mouse cursor or not. But if you decided that you wanted um, to hide the mouse cursor, um, that's really easy to do um, at the beginning of your cutscene or, or whenever you want to hide the mouse cursor. I'll put it um, right here or right after the, the start cutscene. You just want to say mouse.visible equals false. Um, so that sets the visible property of the mouse cursor to false, making it invisible. And don't forget to um, re revisible it again uh, at the bottom. So you want to say mouse.visible equals true. Um, I'm sorry. 
Yeah, true. Uh, at the end. So right before the end cut scene, you want to put the mouse back on. And, and likewise, we haven't talked about GUIs yet or really what GUIs are. Um, but let me just show you. If I run the game now, the mouse cursor is gone. But you see this um, up here where my mouse, uh, at the top of the screen here, you can't see the mouse, but there's that gray bar. Um, and then if I move the mouse up there, you see the icon bar come, in, come on and off. Those are called GUIs. Uh, we haven't really talked about those um, much yet, but just really quickly, I'll show you how to turn those off. Um, that's called, there's a, there's a GUI called um, icon bar, G icon bar. So you want to set G icon bar dot visible equals false. Uh, and I'll show you what that did. So now if I move my mouse up to the top here, um, notice my mouse is coming up past the top of the screen and you don't see the, uh, the icon bar come up anymore. And that's the bar that had the, the walk and the talk and all the buttons at the top. So it does, basically it doesn't allow the player to select any of those icons anymore. And then the, the last one would be the G status line. Dot, and these are just built in. Uh, if you created a custom game, you'll have found these. Uh, these will already be built in for you. And that's the, this status line is that gray bar that's at the top. So did you see it disappear there? It just disappeared. So um, so basically now, you know, there's there's a black screen and that's kind of like what you want to happen in your cutscene. Don't forget though to turn those back on. Now I'll turn icon bar and status line off. So at the bottom, after my cutscene, I want to make sure that I turn them back on. So G um, uh, icon bar dot visible equals true and G status line dot visible equals true. And that way, when you skip the uh, cutscene, I just skipped it. So when I skipped the cutscene, everything came back on. My, my icon bar came back, and my status bar and my mouse cursor came back. So that's just um, how you would do that. So I just wanted to go over that. I, I can't believe I f it just slipped my mind to go over that uh, when I was talking about cutscenes before. Um, one final note here. Um, if you'll notice when I run the game, this is just a nitpicky thing. Watch closely. Did you see everything flash on the top of the screen, the, the status line and the mouse cursor? You saw them briefly for a second and then they disappeared. Why did that happen? Well, that happened because we put all this visible um, mumbo jumbo, we put all of that in the after fade in function. So what happens is the screen fades in, all that stuff is visible. The mouse is visible, the icon bar is visible, the status line is visible. And then after the screen fades in, then it actually runs this code that makes everything invisible. So you, that's why you see it for a brief second or split second before uh, before it hides it. If you didn't want that to happen, then you could put this mouse visible uh, information, you could put that in the before fade in um, event from your room. But that's just a nitpicky thing. I just wanted to just, just mention that. Of course, if you put this in your before fade in um, uh, event, then you then it's not part of your cutscene anymore. So you'd have to read revisible them sort of after, you know, after the, um, the cutscene ends. But anyway, I just wanted to go over that. Um, sorry I forgot about that, but I'm just going to put this up there as a quick um, quick video. So um, take it easy. Thank you for watching the videos. And if you have suggestions or, or th something, I know a lot of people have asked some basic questions about um, how to use inventory items on objects. And that's something else. That's the next thing I'm going to go over. Um, just some basic things like that. But um, this, this cutscene business took, a, took several, several videos. But uh, I thought it was important to, to do that. So... I will be getting to some of those other questions as well. So um, continue to post comments. And if you have other suggestions, just let me know. I'll try to help out. Thanks for watching, guys.